Hello friends, today we will see what is mean by degrees of freedom, its effect and how to know a degrees of freedom. So let's start. Now here uh, we will take one small example. Suppose this is one geometry which is attached to the fixed support at this point. There is one point P on which force is acting. And there is one more point, point Q. So when there is application of this force, this body will try to move in the another position. So this red color indicates a position after the action of this force. This point move from here to here. This P point move from P to P dash. And this Q point move from Q to Q dash. In this space, so how to locate these points P, Q and the support points? So here we need degrees of freedom. So what degrees of freedom indicates? It is the minimum number of parameters like motion, coordinates, temperature means for this example, these are the coordinates which can be define here so that we can find out exact position of these points means minimum number of parameters required to define position of any entity completely in the space is known as a degrees of freedom means this is an entity which can be defined with the help of coordinates to get the exact location of that entity that is called as a degrees of freedom. It is also short form known as DOF. So how it is necessary in finite element analysis we will see. Suppose here I have taken one example which is having four elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and it has eight nodes 1, 2, 3, 4 and these four. So total number of nodes is eight. Now degrees of freedom is at each node is six degrees. So how it comes six we will see later on. So let's assume for each node we have six degrees of freedom means we will get for a single node we will get six equations. So in this system there are total 8 nodes and this is 6 degrees of freedom for each node. So total number of equation we need to solve here is 8 multiplied by 6 48. So the boundary conditions and the constraint which will reduce means in this system if we have boundary which will reduce the number of degrees of freedom at that node and which will reduce the number of equations. So maximum possible we have to solve is 48 equations. Now we will see how to find out the degrees of freedom. Now let's take one plane in the xy plane. There is one point A which is defined by the coordinates y1 and x1. So x1 indicates it is a horizontal distance, y1 indicates the vertical distance. So two parameters like coordinates, these are the two values of the coordinates which require to define this point A in the space. So we can say that we need, we have two degrees of freedom that is translation in x and y means due to the action of force this point can move in the x direction as well as in the y direction. So it is known as a two degrees of freedom. Now we will move further in the same plane we will have one line. So this line we can define for this point A we define x distance that is horizontal distance and y distance in the vertical distance 
and third parameter we require here is we have to find out the what is the angle made with the horizontal so that we can define this line where it is so we need x1 y1 and the theta x means the angle made by this line so we can see that it has three degrees of freedom that is translation in x and y and rotation in theta direction means if we apply some forces on this line this point can move in horizontal direction or vertical direction or it can rotate in this theta direction so these are the three degrees of freedom now we will take same line in the three dimension space that is x y z so if we want to define this line we need x1 y1 and z1 means the x coordinate that is horizontal y coordinate that is vertical and the z coordinate in the z direction so three coordinates as well as we need theta x means angle measured by to this x axis theta y angle which is made to y axis and theta z angle made to the z axis so we need maximum 6 degrees of freedom that is when we apply some force on that line it can move in x y z that is translation motion or it can rotate in x y and z direction that is rotational motion so if we constrain some body means if we fix this point so <coughs> so we can we can take x or y as a zero so maximum possible number of degrees of freedom is six due to the boundary conditions and the constraint it will further reduce to four five three or two or it may be one but it if it is zero then in finite element analysis we don't have an equation to solve so it is called as a rigid body so at least it should have one degrees of freedom or maximum six number of degrees of freedom at each node thank you